Hello, welcome to 3D Drawing for your model railway. Um, I've been asked a few um, comments and questions uh, in the YouTube channel about uh, certain, not necessarily problems or faults that people are getting, um, but something they're seeing differently to, to what I'm seeing, and also how to do some, some basic recovery of files. So I thought I'd just do a quick video that could show you some of the, the issues they're having and how they can go around um, altering things to, to match what I'm seeing. So for the first one, I'm going to use the RM74 for a prime example. Um, while we're at the top here, we've got the top radio button check. You can see the whole of the model. And then as I come down through each of the components, the, the rest of the model still say seems great while I'm still working on each individual component. Um, some people are seeing this as slightly different to what I'm seeing. It. So I'm just going to go and change some things to, to hopefully show what they're seeing. Then I'll show you how we can go about fixing that. So if we look at the comment that's been made on this one, um, each time I create, essentially he's put in here about trying to follow the RM74, and each time he creates a new component, the others lose their grey solid and become like wire frames. So if we jump back into Fusion, essentially what he's seeing is at the top with the radio button, he'll have a greyed out um, object. And then when you come down to each of the components, each component will be greyed out when you're active and the rest of them will become like a wireframe and no matter which component you select that component when it becomes active will be grey and the rest of them will turn into wireframes and it works all the way down and essentially this is it's not really a fault but it's more of a setting within the system that you need to change to be able to flick between active components being visible and the rest being invisible or all of them being visible so as I say, it, this isn't really an error, it's more of a, a setting within the system. So to, to alter this, if we come up to the top here where your name is, up in the top right hand corner, and then go into preferences. Once that loads up, there'll then be some settings we can change to, to fix this. So if you come up to the top, generals this first page that we're looking at. If we come down to design, and then at the moment we've got active component visibility so essentially what that checkbox is doing is when that uh, component becomes active that one becomes visible and the rest become invisible if we change that checkbox to be turned off apply and ok now the rest of them are all visible as we scroll through them and hopefully that should fix um, the, what the uh, person seeing there and hopefully this will then so other people can can change their settings if they want to to have the same visibility as what I've got, then then we're all working to the same page. Okay, so the next one we're going to look at isn't again isn't really an issue. It's just a a, a view that uh, somebody's seeing slightly differently. When they've installed Fusion, they're saying that the screen they're looking at doesn't match what I've got, and down this left hand side they've got like an extra panel that they've their visibility. Now I've got the same panel. All it is at the top left hand corner is the data panel and this is the panel they're seeing which lists all the projects that they're working on and all they've got to do is just click the hide and unhide panel at the top here what you can then do is once you're in here if you could scroll through to say a file you're working on if you double click on it it will then open up and you've got the different versions of that file that you're working on and then you can just double click on it and it'll open that file within your uh, design system and then you can just close the panel back up if you're using the X or the little nine square button here, and then you can continue working on the project that's open. While we've got this open, the file that I've just opened isn't actually a file that's editable at the moment. It's a read-only file. Um, and this is because when we're using the free version of Fusion 360, you're only allowed to have a maximum of 10 editable files at any one time. And that's not to say that you can't have more files than that. It's just that only 10 of them can be editable. So at the top here it says read only document is not editable. So all you've got to do is click make editable document. This file then becomes editable. And you get this warning that I've reached the limit. So I've got the 10 out of 10 that you can see up here, 10 out of 10 files. And I can then work on this document, save it and do whatever I need to within that document. Obviously when you've got your 10 limit and, and you want to do create more, 
you can click up top here you can maybe subscribe or click on my editable documents it'll open up this side panel and you've got a list of all your editable documents so I say you can click up there or in your home panel if you scroll to the top you've got my editable documents at the top here you can just click on it scroll down to something that you're not using on and then you can just click on read only make read only and that file then becomes a read only opening up your space to do something else so let's just change this one I don't want that in there mm, not sure what that's done there seems to have opened up that in there let's undo that um, we'll scroll down we'll just make this read only so then I've got my number of files back that I can create new documents if I want to Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is, not many people know, but Fusion actually sort of auto-saves every few minutes, depending on what you've got it set at. So if we come up to our preferences again, let that load up for us. And then halfway down on this general page, there's a recovery time and interval, and that's set in minutes. At the moment, I've got it set as five minutes. So every five minutes, it will save a recovery file onto Fusion's server. So should your software crash or your system becomes unusable for some reason, then you're able to, to recover that file. So to recover the file, if it does crash, if you come up to your file up the top here, open recovered documents. Now obviously I don't have any because I haven't had a crash, but open recovered documents and then there'll be a list of those files that you can recover um, to, to drag back. So obviously um, once once you've recovered that then it will clear out your system so that there's no more recovered files there but um, it, it, that's one of those things that should you I don't know do an hour's worth of work and forget to save potentially with that five minute recovery file you're only going to lose five ten minutes worth of work that you can then go back in uh, and re fix and recover okay so the next we're going to look at is file versions so i don't know if many people have noticed but at the top here my file's named rm74 and it's got an extension v42 now that's essentially version 42 so every time i click on the save button that will change version numbers so if i click user saved that will become version 43 what we'll do if i've made a difference to it um, and then what you can do in your documents down side here you've got the version number here load, load up you can come down here so now it's changed to version 43 there you go but you can then go back and say actually I, I made a change I don't want that or it's completely corrupted the file you can just go back in your history select the file and then it will automatically reload what you would previously done and then you don't actually have to you know go back and do lots of work potentially should you have an issue that's made the file corrupted or unrecoverable for you. Okay, so the next feature is quite a nice little one. Um, let's say you, you've drawn all this and you really want to send it to someone for them to look at or to check over. Maybe you're quite proud of it and you want to share your document on Facebook or something like that. Um, you can do a screen capture. Now obviously most people know about if you do control alt print screen you can then copy that screen into something like paint and then save that as a document. But if you come up to file capture image at the top here and then you've got different things that you could set uh, your document window size and transparent background and able to lay and look i just leave this unticked on the top one and tick on the bottom if you click on ok you can then give it a name file extension i generally use jpegs and then you can either save it to the cloud if you want to which is where the files for all your cad work are or you can save it to your computer just click the radio button, whichever one's the most appropriate for you. You can change the extension. So let's say we're going to put them in, I'm putting it in the RM74 folder, click on OK. And then if we come over to the RM74 folder, down the bottom, we've got the, the document. You can then open it up, send this on to anybody you want to. So hopefully with this video, we've been able to A, answer some questions that some people have asked, and also show you some of the settings of Infusion that you can go around, alter, um, and make things just work better for yourself, depending on what preferences you've got. 
So I hope you've enjoyed watching that. If you have, please leave a thumbs up. And any more questions or queries, yeah, please leave a comment below. And I'm happy to put one of these videos together. If I know the answer, I'll happy to do it and help you all out. So thanks for watching.